Good morning. So we are today going to continue the Uddhav Gita uh, chapter 1 last message of Sri Krishna from verse 17 onwards. This is Uddhav Gita last message of Sri Krishna chapter 1 verse 17 onwards. Therefore Art thou the Lord of the movable and immovable? For thou, O ruler of the organs, are untouched by the sense objects, even though enjoying them, which are presented by the activities of the organs created by Maya, and of which others are afraid, even when these are themselves absent. It's a very convoluted verse. So understand it slowly. So here the sages, lords, gods, everybody including Uddhava is addressing Sri Krishna. This is Uddhav Gita. So Uddhava's questions are also these. But Uddhava has lesser knowledge about the Lord. So how does this come about? Remember, Uddhava is born as his friend, all right, on earth, and uh, this is he is from the Yaduvanch, one of his dear friends. So now, from here onwards, the gods also have come when Krishna is about to pass on. So they wanted to know a lot of things. Now, these questions are important because they are pointing in certain direction to everyone. Unfortunately, people do not understand these questions, have a lot of knowledge themselves. Okay. So, what is the question and how these questions are worded? Look at the question. Therefore, art thou the ruler of the movable and the immovable? For thou, O ruler of the organs, art untouched by the sense object. I will just take this much of the verse for you to understand. We are talking about, over here, about Sri Krishna himself. Now, Sri Krishna is the Supreme Lord, remember this. All the gods know about that, including Uddhava also knows. Now, you also know. Okay. So, he is the God of the movable and the immovable. We have animate and inanimate objects. Both these objects are there in this world. What is the animate object and what is inanimate? Something that keeps on moving like human beings and birds and animals. They keep on moving. Planets, they go right around the sun. and Then we have the entire solar system and that is also moving. It is alive, throbbing. Right? Then we have objects which are immovable. Like on earth we have a stone. The stone doesn't have legs, you know, to walk. Ah, yes, you can make stone <laughs> legs to the stone. But still it can't walk, correct? You may make a statue out of the stone with legs in it, but it's still not going to move. It requires something else to move. So did you get it? Now, movable and immovable objects. And thou art the ruler of the organs. What are the organs? Now here the gods are talking about Krishna is the one who moves organs also. What organs are we talking about? The senses and the other body organs that we have, isn't it? So you will find that your heart is beating. Okay, your stomach is working, right? Your intestines are working, your brain is working. Why are they doing so? It is because of the Lord. Alright? So here he is saying, O ruler of the organs, he is the one who rules the entire system of organs. All the organs in your body are under one domain only. That is Sri Krishna's domain. You are untouched by the sense objects. Anything outside the body, 
let us say there is a Ferrari over there. The Lord is not interested in the Ferrari. I mean, just imagine when he goes about in his flying machines, why would he be interested in a Ferrari, right? Or a Rolls Royce. Why would he be interested? So just think like that. The Lord of the senses. He is actually the Lord of the senses. And yet he is not affected by any of the objects outside. He is not affected. So it means simply two things. One is the object outside appears because of our sense, senses, isn't it? I can see an object, I can hear about an object, I can smell it, I can taste it, I can touch it. That is the way in which I can understand that there is an object outside and I have to know what it is. So if I see some object outside, I get to understand what it is. Now the moment I say that I have seen an object, I want to possess it. Imagine you are walking down the road hmm? and you see a 2000 rupees note lying on the floor somewhere. Don't you think you are going to bend down and pick it up? Of course, I would pick it up, won't you? <laughs> In the same way, if you find a gold coin or maybe something like that, you are going to pick it up. I still remember one day I found one, one gold ring. <laughs> <laughs> and one day on the road, I think I must have found about three, four hundred rupees, yeah, ten rupee notes. They are just lying like this on the road, and I picked all of them. Yeah, there was nobody inside, by the way. Whose notes are these? I don't know. So I picked them up, put them in my pocket. Every year I have, I would find something. So naturally, our idea is you have to possess it, right? So if you see a nice car, the idea is immediately, can I have it? If you see somebody eating some, you know, delicious or something, so can I taste it? Again, with ears there is a problem. See, with my taste buds, there is a difficulty, I have to go and get it first. With my ears, I don't have the problem. You know, the, the one organ which is the most sneakiest of the lot is the ear. Alright? Nobody can stop words or things falling in my ears. So I have, my ears are open always and they are listening. So I hear everything that is going on. And unless and until you know, I am deaf, that's a different story. <laughs> then I can't help it. Eyes, second organs. What I got to see, I got to see. Right? Inquisitive mind, you know that. I want to see something means I want to see something. Have you seen if there is some accident or something on the road or there is some, let us say, some great persona is going, are we not going to crane our necks and see who that person is? Of course, this is a very, very common phenomenon which you can see. Unless and until you don't want to get involved in some action, you will not. You will say, I don't want to see. Huh? So here, eyes are the second, of, you know, sense organs which want to be a part of a scene. So all these organs that I mentioned just now, they always want to possess the things outside. So the eyes want to see, the ears want to hear. So anything that is going on in this world, they want to be a part of it. Now what is this verse saying? Though Krishna is the master of all the senses, yet he is unattached. He is not even touched. Okay. Even though enjoying them. Now this is a verse like I told you, it is very convoluted. So you have to understand it slowly. So Krishna. Now when I say Krishna, it doesn't mean Sri Krishna himself. But like it is mentioned, he is also the ruler of these organs. He is there inside your body as well. He is the ruler of your organs as well. Correct? So this Krishna is seeing through the eyes. So enjoying the sights and the sounds. He is enjoying the sights 
and the sounds so he can hear everything he can see everything that is going around and yet and yet he is not a part of it he is untouched this is exactly what we have to do in our life if you want to elevate yourself to the level of Sri Krishna you have to ensure that you are not going to get carried away by anything around you so it means even if I see a 2000 rupee note if you are Krishna what will you do the answer may be according to most of us I will not pick it up no Krishna will pick it up but he is not going to dwell on the subject he is not going to say some idiot must have thrown it see or it must have fallen off from somebody's pocket he is not going to say any of these words he is just going to put, pick it up and put it in his pocket that's it beyond that he is not going to indulge in any small talk in his mind the reason why we get trapped in the material world is because we do too much of talking in our mind. So if you hear something, let us say one person is saying, he is so dark. You know? And the moment you hear this word, oh, they are calling me dark. You don't know what dark is. You go and see your father. <laughs> do you understand? We want to give it back. No, this is exactly what Krishna is not supposed to do, right? Krishna will not do this. He can hear everything and yet he is not a part of that entire scene. He is not going to be involved or indulging in this kind of a small talk, right? Which are presented by the activities of the organs created by Maya. These organs. They have been created by Maya. Now you will ask me why Maya is the creator of all these organs. Because every organ is illusive, exclusive and it is full of illusion. Did you understand? It creates illusions. Now we were discussing about something a few days ago about how Attraction starts. Attraction is between say a man and a woman or whatever. Okay, Let us think how it happens. Now you may say that you know one of the greatest things is right swipe, left swipe. Okay. <laughs> Nowadays no, no, not that way. <laughs> I am not saying that the illusion starts over there. What happens is the moment you see an object, now we are talking about emotional things. We are not talking about, and it is also physical and emotional, right? Before the man sees the woman, he is already attracted towards her. You will say, oh, how is that possible? See, even if she is not in front of him, even if that person is not in front of him, still they say in science, you know, hormones are overworking. It's not hormones. <laughs> we have number of bodies, right? We have so many bodies. One is the physical body. This is the food body. Second one is the breath, you know. The third one is the mind, the fourth is the intellectual and the last one is the happy body. Now don't be under the impression that the bodies are only confined inside this container. It's not. Do you know something? I, I ask yourself this question. Even if you have taken say, uh, you know, fish, a dry fish, you know dried fish, how much it stinks? Let us say you have put it inside one container also. Do you think the smell is contained inside? No. The moment you open the fridge and if there is 
something which is going wrong, you know, and you can actually smell it. <laughs> so it's exactly like that. There are so many things acting inside this entire universe which are far outside the physical body, physical frame of yours. The reaction is happening just outside. Some people call it the aura, A U R A, you know, aura. Everybody carries an aura. If you come across one big villain in your life, you know, naturally before the person has entered that room only, you are, oh my God, this person is coming. Don't we say this? <laughs> exactly like that. You are afraid of that person. Or if there's an irritating character in our life, just the thought itself that person is going to come today. <gasps> Okay, now you have children, grandchildren or some nephew, nieces who are literally monkeys. You know monkeys, they don't stay in one place and they just go on chattering, 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 chattering or they keep on dropping things, breaking things. You know, even before they have arrived in your house, you are already dreading the fact, oh my God, they are going to come. You, you know this, this uh, feeling that you get before anybody has come, that's the kind of thing. So that means, the man knows about the woman and the woman knows about the man even before anything has happened. So got it? We out operate outside the perimeter of our body. And this is something we need to understand. So Maya has created these illusory objects. What are these? Our senses are illusory by the way. They are going to delude you. You may smell something nice. You know, there is a, have you heard of Palak? Palak, the greens, you know, they look so nice, environmentally friendly. I tell a child to eat Palak, kale or one of those, you know, ah, he's going to make faces. You know, the reason why? because he doesn't like it. Okay. Now, have you seen the bangan, aubergines, okay? Eggplant, they call it. It looks so nice. Purple color or which color, whatever color that is. Looks so cute. You know, I used to hate that thing from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> the moment they said, you know, today is Vangyachi Bhaji. Finished. <laughs> Vangi means the eggplant or origin. So, the moment somebody said, no, I don't want to eat my food. No, as a kid, I hated them. So, or Karela. Bitter gold. You know, bitter gold. <laughs> When people drink that bitter goat juice, I really wonder how do they manage that? First thing in the morning, people will eat, uh, you know, bitter goat juice. Ah! <laughs> but bitter goat juice is supposed to be very good for your heart. Okay? So don't do all like me. You should drink. If you have issues connected to the heart. So Maya creates these objects. And of which others are afraid. You better be afraid. You see, everybody is afraid of all these objects. How are they afraid? You see in the eyes. Hmm? Imagine somebody making those big eyes. <clears throat> what are you doing? Or otherwise with your mouth. You know, with your hand, fingers. <laughs> you know, the teachers are always there. They are going to be, you are going to be afraid of them even the moment they come into the class. I mean, at least it, I used to be afraid, all right? I don't know about you all, but think about it. So that is how it is. Even when these are absent, even when these are absent, just now I told you, no, you need not start that confined to the body. Even if they are absent, absent means not necessarily there. Even if they are absent, okay? Now there is something which is called Auto location, you know, I don't know whether you know about it. The birds, they sound, they, they throw some sounds and they are able to locate an object. There are lots of birds like bats and all. So, even when we use our sonar, sonar is sound waves which are sent down by the uh, submarines and they are able to locate some objects down there. So, People have this ability of recognizing another thing 
even without those things not being there. So let us say some person is born blind. But you know the blind person has more abilities than a person who is having eyes. You know that or you don't know that? See, we have human beings, those who have eyes, no? we are blind actually. Most of the things we don't see. <laughs> but the blind people see it much better. Because their other senses are developed too much. Got it? So something like that. So Maya, which is a part of our organ system, she has created this universe of illusion right around us. Including these organs are also illusion. Remember, the organs are illusion, the objects around us are illusion and yet we get carried away by it. So they say, even if the objects are not there, just a thought can create such kind of waves in the human being. Think about it. Now, if there is tamarind, you know tamarind, just keep on saying tamarind, 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 four or five times, you know. You know <laughs> how your mouth is going to start watering. Just the as if my salivary glands are overacting on it. My salivary glands will start. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Okay, Bengali sweets. Yum yum. See, the moment I say Bengali sweets, you can think of rasgullas and all those things. They all come in front of your eyes. <laughs> so even if the objects are absent, yet you are attracted towards them. Got it? So this is the job of Maya. Maya creates this illusion. So what are we discussing? We are discussing verse 17 where the gods are talking to Krishna and they are saying, you are the master of everything. The movable and the immovable. Both. And he is also the one who rules our senses and sense objects. Everything. He rules everything in this world. Got it? But these things, he is untouched by. He is not getting involved in it. He can see an object, he can hear things, but yet he is not going to be involved in it. You have to become like that. We all have to become exactly like that. Untouched by anything. Right? That is when you can become Krishna. Now, all these objects that are there, they are being helped by the organs. Now, these organs which are there, like I said, eyes, ears and all, they are all created by Maya, including the objects outside, they are also created by Maya. And everybody is afraid of these objects. Afraid doesn't mean actually afraid. You know you are going to get carried away by them. Desires are going to get raised. So many things are going to happen. Right? That is what it means. And yet, whether they are present or not present, you are still going to get attracted to. So, they are describing Sri Krishna who is a part of this universe and yet he is not a part of it. So, we have just completed verse 17 from Uddhav Gita. We are doing Uddhav Gita verse 18, the last message of Sri Krishna. So, Uddhav Gita verse 18 says from first chapter, Thou whose mind 16,000 wives failed to unbalance with their love shafts and allurements, their smiling glances expressing their ardor, which rendered beautiful their eyebrows from which love messages were sent forth to strengthen those love shafts. Ah, this is verse is all ulta sulta. So let, let me put it this way. Very simply, he is saying. All your wives, you know, 16,108 wives. Remember, Krishna had so many wives. So, all these gods, you know, they must be all jealous. Okay, think about it. What are they saying? They are saying to the Lord, you are not even disturbed by this. Right? That is the worst. Summation is this. Though you have 16,108 wives, but you are not disturbed by it. So, we will take the verse slowly. How does it work? In the last verse, I was explaining to you that even before the boy has seen the girl, he is already attracted towards her. Correct? Now let us try to understand Krishna's case. Now remember Krishna, when he was small also, okay, there were gopis around him. How many of them? 
countless. Don't even count, okay? It's better not to count. <laughs> and there was Radha Rani also. Some people, they are always going to say Radha didn't exist. You see, just because it is not written about one person in a book doesn't mean that uh, that person doesn't exist. See, think about it in your life also. You know, your life doesn't mean everybody. Okay. You go to the, you know, chat or WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever that is, you will find that there are certain people which are not visible physically. Right? Why? You don't want the world to know that they are there in your life, isn't it? Something like this. Now see, if there is a girl, now if a person is going to go and see her, or if this girl is going to see this boy, you think her Facebook page will be with all her boyfriends and friends in the college, you know, putting her hands around like this and taking pictures or selfies? No, no. Same way the boy will not put pictures of his girlfriends and this one and that one. Otherwise, what will happen? There is going to be a problem. So, he is going to keep a public persona. Devoid of all these people, isn't it? Every human being does that. Okay. So, they will not want to show anything in their profiles. Likewise, you will find that, just imagine, if you got thrown out by your last company, you think you are going to go and update in your LinkedIn, I got kicked out in my last company. You think that is what you are going to say? No, no. <laughs> you are not going to tell the world, I got kicked out. On the contrary, you will say, I resigned from the organization. Okay, because I was getting better opportunities. I mean, think about all the lies that everybody says. So now, come. let us come back to this verse. 16,108 wives on one side and thousands and thousands of gopis on the other side. Krishna was involved with literally everybody in this universe. Okay? Now, when we think about Krishna, 16,108 wives, the first thought which comes to the mind is, oh my God. But he is God, no, he, oh my God, he is God only. So, God is capable of doing whatever he wants to, correct? That, that is also the, the thing that we always keep on saying, oh, God is capable of doing whatever he wants to. Now, let us see what this verse is actually talking about. The literal explanation we will first take and then I will tell you what is the hidden explanation. So the gods are saying, you got 16,108 wives. Whose mind, thou whose mind, 16,000 wives failed to unbalance. If you have one girlfriend or if you have one boyfriend, do you know how difficult it is to even keep your mind under control? And especially, just imagine, you are constantly being bombarded by, oh my God, what is she doing? What is he doing? Where is he eating? What is he doing? You know how many thoughts are going on? Huh? The mind is continuously disturbed. Got it? When you are in love, finished. Everything is finished. Isn't it? Then you don't know what is going to happen. You are constantly, when you are sleeping, when you are awake, even in your dreams, okay? All your three states, finished. You do not have rest anywhere. Your thoughts are always going to be going to that person. Now think about it. Krishna has got 16,108 16, wives and yet he is undisturbed. You may say, what a callous person. I am sorry, he is not callous. He cares for everybody. His kindness incorporates. Right? He is the epitome of every good word that is there in the dictionary. The superlative. That is why he is called Supreme Divine Consciousness. Otherwise he would be okay. Just like that. No. <laughs> he is the Supreme. Highest. So think about it. 
Even love, don't you consider him to be the highest epitome of love? Krishna and love go hand in hand. So yet, Krishna was not affected even by these gopis or by his 16,108 wives. Why stop over there? Every wife had number of children and then so many more, you know millions, the permutation combination don't even think of. And then when you have a grandchild or when you have your son, are you not affected by that person? Of course, you ask any mother, ask any father. You see the full of Instagram is full of my baby, my daughter, my son, my this, my that, they are the apple of my eye, there is this, they are that, all that kind of nonsense is there. And yet Krishna was not affected. They failed to unbalance. Now everybody was in love with Krishna. Every person there was in love with Krishna. They were sending their love shafts. You know love shafts? How can you send love shafts? You have heard of Cupid, isn't it? Huh? And Cupid you have seen that fellow, he's got two tiny wings and he keeps on roaming all over the place and he is always having bow and arrow and he will send those shafts. I mean don't think of yourself that, oh there is no such kind of a person. No, of course there is a person like that. You, you can't see him because you are seeing somebody else. See? <laughs> He's always lurking everywhere. So, Cupid is everywhere, okay? Right? Well, think about it. If Angelina Jolie comes in front of, uh, you know, thousands of soldiers, let us see, think, you know, what's going to happen? How many Cupids have to be there? You don't know. <laughs> in the same way, it does not really matter, but that object which we talk about, the love shafts, what does this mean? Just the thought, ding, it enters your mind. Okay, it's like a guy is looking at a girl, he's just looking at her, <gasps> he's looking at me, and then something happens, ding, 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 like that, exactly like that. So look at it from that point of view, and allurements. Allurements, you look at allurements, what are there, what allurements means what, you will find plunging necklines, these, that, you know, all those kind of, there are nothing but allurements. I was reading somewhere in uh, some update, she likes to wear these kind of dresses, because it <laughs> why, because you will watch some Facebook update or some uh, Instagram, somebody had written and below that it was written like this. But that is such a common phenomena. It is nothing but allurement, enticement. It's like that, you know, candle and then all those, you know, small creatures which go around that candle flame. Isn't it? That is how it is. It's an attraction. So these allurements are kind of an attraction in this world. They are all attractive. Now think about 16,108 wives. Now let us not talk about the gopis. The gopis are still in Vrindavan. We are talking about Dwarka or maybe we are talking about Mathura and so many wives of his and everybody wanting to him. I just imagine, you know, Krishna is sitting over there. Have you had your milk? Have you done this? Have you done that? Everybody wants to come and ask him, no? What? Think and just just imagine he's just looking around. Oh, where did I leave, where did I leave my glasses? I mean, I'm just thinking. You know, Krishna is wearing glasses. Where did I leave my glasses? <laughs> How many people do you think will be running after those glasses? How many people want to actually give them to him? That is how it works. Did you get what I'm saying? It's all allurements, all right? All these kind of things. The smiling glances. <laughs> Smiling glances. Glances are with the eyes, but the smiling. 
you know with your eyes you can do so many things you know that or you don't know that eyes is a form of an expression have you seen the kathak or those you know kuchipudi or those dancers that are there they, they have painted their eyes like this and you see they are doing like this like this like this with their eyes you know how many emotions they can show so if somebody is in love with you you know how their eyes are going no? i am mean, not showing them but i hope you understand what i mean <laughs> so exactly how it works so their eyes are full of love and they are enticing and what is happening to them the smiling glances expressing their ardor ardor is one thing order is another thing okay <laughs> order is lovely loving okay order is obnoxious sometimes hmm? so use deodorants okay but krishna doesn't have to do you know why krishna doesn't have to use deodorants you know the reason why because was first and foremost he takes bath he is always in the river isn't it have you not seen krishna is always romping around in the rivers <laughs> And the next thing is, everybody wants to put on his body chandan and all those things. He is only smelling of chandan, okay? Tulsi leaves, chandan, and all those, you know, intoxicating kind of stuff. It's like uh, the deer, you know, the deer has got that thing ball of musk in his stomach, and he keeps on running because of that. He said, like that. "Imagine like that. Krishna is that intoxicating thing himself." so he is always nicely smell okay good smells now order person who is deeply in love has ardorous it's like an armorous activity okay which rendered beautiful their eyebrows they don't have to go and do their eyebrows okay their eyebrows already nicely shaped maybe they did i don't know during those times whether they they had uh, you know what do you call that spa or something like that i don't know uh, Eyes are nicely shaped. Okay, your eyebrows with love messages were sent forth to send, send, and eyes were talking about love messages. Mm -hmm. You know, I still remember the old films. You know, those old talkies, black and white. Now, in black and white, you can't show how your eyes are different colors and so on and so forth. So, how they will make those signs? You know. exaggerated signs hmm? ha huh? pranamath i'm sure you can hear what those kind of words in some of the old is old films what do you mean by pranamath pranamath is not a word to be used come on nobody says pranamath is a idara something like that but still think so there are certain words which we use certain expressions with the eyes certain things that we do with our hands and you know how the mala they are only speaking of a particular thing when it is anger it speaks of anger the eyes are big they are fuming you have seen all those pictures where they show things coming out from the ears and from the head ha ah, when you are angry like that okay and then expletives in the comic books you have that expletives isn't it the box which says mm. now what happens when you are in love Your eyes are soft. Uh, your your talk is softer than that. You are kind. You are you are know, you are speaking so sweetly, sweetly. Sweetly means yes, of course. The sugar is coming out from your mouth also. <laughs> so do you get this kind of an expression which was happening when Krishna was around? Think like that, and then you will understand what this verse is talking about. His sixteen. Thousand one not eight wives were all in love with Krishna, and they were doing whatever it took them to entice him. If there was one person, you can at least handle it. Sixteen thousand. I don't think there is any human being who can handle this kind of a thing. So let us see what this verse is talking about. Krishna. Now this is the 
adhyatmic explanation the spiritual explanation of this krishna is the master of senses remember in the previous word verse we had done that he is a master of everything do you know every person on this planet earth loves what he does if it is done very nicely suppose you have cooked a nice meal a nice biryani will you taste my biryani do you know how nice i have not even tasted and yet you are saying that it is nice it's a nice biryani see everybody is interested in self and aggrandizement you know that they are going to talk highly about what they are doing say even in your world like uh, how was the shot good no oh what do you mean by good no <laughs> that a director will say or whoever is going to say in the same way our world is exactly like that now think about it everything is attractive around us it's attracting us all the way and when the attraction becomes very very high what do you do you are going to fall into it isn't it when you fall into it you want to possess it you want to own it the object has to be owned like yesterday raj went to see some things and there she saw a nice krishna painting what do you call that tanjore painting now that tanjore painting is some 60 80 years old it's a very old piece an original immediately what happened i want it i want it the thought comes in the mind it is attraction it tells you i want it i want it i want it so your senses are drawn towards it so krishna is that senses right did i say that objects is also he objects are also very pretty the wife 16108 why you think they are different than krishna they are krishna himself he has created imagery so we are coming back to this explanation you everybody who is listening me is a part of this phenomena everything in this world is so beautiful and nice is going to drag your senses and your mind towards it but we when we have to grow in our spiritual state teacher what are you supposed to do you are supposed to be detached from all these things don't get involved in it don't get attracted to it don't get don't fall for it so these two verses 17 and 18 are talking about the krishna tatva in us the godliness that is there in us it is never attracted towards any physical or mental objects in this world though it is a part of the stream it's a part of it and yet not to get carried away by it this is the verse which tells you 16108 are nothing but our attractions we have so many attractions in this world and they get take us out there don't get involved with all this though you may be married to them married means can you deny an object which has come right in front of your eyes can you just close it no i am not going to see you are not a hypocrite isn't it and you are not even an ostrich mentality you cannot be an ostrich you cannot hide your head inside sand and say hey, the object doesn't exist no when you are seeing an object don't get carried away by it so there are 16108 attractions in this world which we should not fall for even if we are getting involved with that object that means what even if the object comes in front of us we need not get trapped in it so 
we have just completed verse 18 from Uddhav Gita, the last message of Sri Krishna, chapter 1. So tomorrow we will bring in verse 19 onwards. Alright? So I will take your leave and I will see you all tomorrow.